Freddie's backyard for many, many years <laughs> and have enjoyed this. Um, recently, we were all out at Caledesi Island and saying goodbye to a good friend, Marilyn Belson. And Freddie had said, why do I have to wait till I die to hear all the nice things that people think about me? So, Freddie, be careful of what you ask for. <laughs> I know you're familiar with This Is Your Life. Well, this is your roast. <laughs> uh, before we get started, everybody's going to get a chance to come up and uh, give a good memory of our now and not departed Freddie Webb. Uh, but I think Emily has a little presentation to do first. Oh, gosh, I'm embarrassed. First, first, yeah. 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 Freddie, first of all, we brought you a pair of magic wings to put on. Oh, yes. We figured you worked for the airline show. I did. We figured we'd hear some wings for you. Well, thank you. One hand at a time. So you could keep flying. <laughs> Actually, you should have bought her a broom. <laughs> such a remarkable woman and we have some things to say about you Gosh, first of all did you know that she is a wonderful sailor she would make the top sailing records in the United States if you turn the list upside down <laughs> <laughs> and she uh, she has made a remarkable contribution to sailing throughout the world she switched to a golf cart <laughs> and, uh, but we had some other things. Uh, she is also a sex symbol in the Depends set. <laughs> and look at look at her. She's sitting there smiling. Now think, what's on her mind? And the answer is nothing. <laughs> you know, Freddie loves to wear back silly home, I'm hats. <laughs> that orange hat. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> and a new horn. Oh. Oh. That's great. She had grapes hanging down from the hat and was coming for the grape cruise, and that's when I was a new salt. To help Freddie a little bit, you know, do the yard. We got here mo Pretty much everything was done and all cleaned up. But there was a little pile here, so Sylvia and I came over here to get rid of the pile. And then, all of a sudden, Sylvia saw a ladder going up to the roof. And she looked at me and she said, I hope she's not up there on that roof. <laughs> and the two of us are looking, looking for <laughs> Freddie up on the roof. And uh, we couldn't see her, so we got really nervous. And then all of a sudden, she was over there on the corner cleaning up, and then Sylvie looked at her and said, Freddie, what is that ladder doing up there? <laughs> and Freddie mumbled something like, well, it's attached to the house or something like that. <laughs> well, I will tell you that I, was, I joined Win Lasses in 95, and Freddie and I have kept up a running conversation ever since about all the... Uh, political things happening in the world and how we could best uh, run the schools and the <laughs> county and the city and 
uh, we sometimes we talk about sailing too. But I will tell you that I have a little gift for you, Freddie. Oh. And I didn't know all this was going. This is this is this is just something small. This is three wooden spoons, and this is for the hostess with the mostess. You can use these spoons to stir up a new dish or a little trouble. Perhaps they spoon dance to entertain us <laughs> with your great humor. I really appreciate your friendship. Thank you. And all I would like to say, hope I'm still around when I'm your age and be as nice as you are and happy as you <laughs> are. You. Oh, well okay. said. So I show up at her house, my first time out, and we get in her golf cart, and we start driving through the streets of Dunedin. I felt like I was at the Rose Bowl Parade with the Grand Marshal. I think everybody in Dunedin, or at least in this three-block vicinity, knows Freddie, loves Freddie. So as we're driving by, she's got this horn that goes, Awooga! Awooga! And people are like, Freddie! I went home in such a good mood, and I told my husband, we are retiring in Dunedin, and we're moving next to Freddie. <laughs> for my first outing, and I too now can go, it was no big deal. Um, anybody want to come up? We're all friends. Everybody's got to have a story. I'll, Careful, it. Or, uh, I'll get it over with. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not too good at speaking. I think it's at this point in time, according to legal ramifications, we do need to tell you that you are being filmed and videotaped for your own protection, and nothing will be used against you. <laughs> Wait for Hollywood. Oh. <laughs> well, be careful if you ever go out to dinner with uh, Freddie. We walked into Iris's one night, and oh boy, they all just came to attention. <laughs> Put us in a corner booth, and they came over and they kept buying. <laughs> what would you like, Freddie? What you want? Whoa, 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 whoa. Whole time, bowing, bowing. And she said, Well, they think I'm a queen. And they treat me really nice because if they don't, this is what I leave for a tip. <laughs> and she had done that the week before, so we had a really good service. <laughs> that the one thing I need when we go on cruises when you bring your own food is an extra sandwich because Freddie always asks me for my sandwich, so I bring a second one. And other than the windlasses, the, I run into Freddie all the time at fundraisers, particularly the fundraisers where they serve great food. <laughs> Freddie is there, not for political reasons, I don't think. I'm pretty sure. I think she's there for the recruit for a committee vote one time with Freddie and Ann Newton and Georgia and I forget who else. I guess I was the fourth person and we went off. It was the last race of the season so it must have been grandmothers or something like that. And we got in the boat and we did our committee business and then the boat started sailing away and the boat went over to Caladesi Marina for lunch, but I didn't have any. Nobody told me I was gonna get back at 2.30 in the afternoon with no lunch. So they shared some with me, but I just thought that was funny that nobody told me. So she uh, sort of blew through a stop sign and a cop saw her and put his red light and started following her, but she was able to slip around an alley or something? No, I turned around in the street. He couldn't turn around, and I went down an alley. <laughs> so we were just wondering if there's an all-cops lover, so she's, uh, she's... Is she one of those male dancers or something? <laughs> <laughs> they told them to leave that old white-haired lady alone in that golf cart. <laughs> I think as everybody talks, another story comes up. I had uh, been kayaking, and Lila Bugenhagen said, Oh, if you go downtown Dunedin, there's going to be Mitt Romney. You know, maybe our next president, maybe not. But at any rate, there's a, a crowd of 200 people. 
And I have a friend that has the hot dog, hot dogs on Main, the really good hot dogs. Anyhow, she owns this shop, no commercial. Anyhow, I stop in there to say hello, and I said, you know, I'm um, trying to see, I'm surprised there's so many people here, and I don't know anybody. And she said, well, do you know Freddie Webb? Do you know Susan at the hot dog shop? Yeah, she's, yeah, she's one of my really good friends. Well, anyhow, she said, well, Freddie Webb is here. You can find her because she has a loud orange hat on. <laughs> so anyhow, I'm standing behind the tree with Lila Bugenhug, and I said, well, where in the heck in this big crowd are we going to find? There's Freddie. <laughs> so, and you know that I always have a camera with me, but all of my cameras, all of my photos have a big crowd of people with this little orange flop hat. It's kind of like trying to go, where's Waldo? It's like, oh, you can't see her face in any of the shots. Hearing everybody talk about food, and you pointed out to me that you eat out at the finest places every single morning, and I was salivating, thinking about oh, ham and eggs and pancakes and all those kinds of good things. And I said, geez, will you share with me? Where is it that you eat? She said, oh, it's very inexpensive, only a buck or two. And I said, good grief, a buck or two? Can't get much for that. She says, well, you know, you're in the hospital. That's where they feed you. Dollar <laughs> <laughs> and a half. We ought to join. Where is this? <laughs> yeah. I guess at the oh, hospital here. Yeah. Yeah. We all know Freddie likes to drive her golf cart everywhere around Dunedin, but uh, they have an orange festival parade in the middle of summer, and it's really hot, but she always gets in that parade, and she gets in the Christmas parade, and she she drives her golf cart and joins any activity going on in Dunedin. It's always fun to see her in her orange hat. I don't wish too much in life. I haven't done too much for the public or anything, but I sure have a heck of a lot of fun, and I was kind of mischievous all my life. I went. I went into school um, in uh, college in Montreat, North Carolina, and I, of course I got restricted, and uh, it was a ball game, so I went out the window, went to the ball game, came back, nobody knew the difference. Then I went into nurses training in Biltmore, North Carolina, and the nurses home was a, a home. Uh, uh, anyway. Uh, I got restricted, of course, for something. I didn't pick my clothes up off the floor, and I got sent to the attic. Well, I had a date that night. So my roommate called my date and told him, so he brought a ladder and brought some clothes. <laughs> went down the roof, down the ladder, changed my clothes, went to the dance at the in Asheville her, City Hall, wherever it was, came back, went up the ladder in the attic. Nobody ever knew the difference. <laughs> And one time they called me to the airplane to bring a policeman. I thought, well, this is pretty bad. So I got the cop and I went behind the, tell them to stay behind the boat, post. And he, I went down, the pilot was there and the co-pilot and the flight attendants. There he is. And old Steinbrenner comes up. Freddie, darling, we've got to quit meeting like this. <laughs> they folded his garment bag and he cursed. And that's why they called the cops. Well, then... Mr. Steinbrenner came in my office because he didn't want people to know who he was. And I have a private bathroom. He came out of the bathroom cursing, GD, blah, blah, where are your paper towels? And I said, George, I looked right in his eyes, and I said, get the heck out of here. You see that public restroom sign? Get out and go to it. <laughs> now, Freddie, darling, we got to be friends. I said, you be a friend with me. I ain't friend with you. But anyway, we got along very well. But he was a tough man, and if anybody didn't know it, he was a philanthropist for sure. The first time I ever, before it was even known, when I was working at the airport, he took the whole Dunedin Little League and part of the families to New York on all expense trip to a Yankee football game, or baseball game. So he was a darn good guy, but uh, he had, uh, people were afraid of him. I was <laughs> They said uh, uh, he wanted, needed a seat that he could put his foot out in the aisle. So I looked down the aisle and I saw some people and I went to this man and I said, would you mind changing seats? I knew where I was going to put him. He said, no, I chose this one. I'm going to sit here. So I went to the man back of him and I said, sir, 
would you mind changing seat? This man needs an aisle seat. He said, I'd be glad to. And I said, so this man in front that refused to move could hear me. I said, well, be a, my guest and have a first class seat. <laughs> I'd be embarrassed if I was wearing my hat backwards. <laughs> the first thing I open up is says, hey, sweetie, remember how sweet I am. <laughs> Chris Ross. <laughs> Woohoo! What a ride! <laughs> 